The U.S. House of Representatives has passed a bill to provide additional aid to Ukraine after months of delay. The volume of the package is $60.84 billion. Some $23.2 billion of the military aid will be used to replenish U.S. weapon stockpiles, $11.3 billion are allocated for current U.S. military operations in the region. Another $13.8 billion will be used for the purchase of weapons systems, defense products, and defense services. Some $26 million are for supervision of the assistance provided. The bill requires partners and allies to pay a fair share based on mandatory cost comparisons. It also raises financial limits on some presidential spending cutting powers. The bill will be sent to the Senate for final decision, and then to President Joe Biden for ratification. Lavrov announced Russia's new invasion plans in Ukraine. Russia has information that French instructors, along with other representatives of military and special services of European countries, are working in Ukraine, Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov said. Now Poland, the Baltic states, the Czech Republic, Bulgaria recently under the current leadership, these guys are setting the tone, and already the Europeans have to adapt, somehow. Take French President Emmanuel Macron with his nervous statements about sending French soldiers to Ukraine. Then someone explains that he was misunderstood, and he himself says again, no, I was understood correctly. He said in an interview with the radio station Sputnik, Govorit, Moskva, Komsomolskaya, Pravda. At the same time, the top diplomat pointed out that there is information that not only French mercenaries but also instructors may be even together, but along with some other representatives of military and special services of European countries are working in Ukraine. Our line, in this regard, is very simple and very clear. They did not want to negotiate in a fair way. We offered a treaty on European security in 2008 and 2009. Lavrov concluded. He said that Russia will not announce pauses in fighting if new talks on Ukraine begin. We have said that we are ready for talks, but contrary to the Istanbul story, we will not announce any pauses in fighting for the duration of talks. The process must continue, he said. Lavrov emphasized that the situation on the ground had changed significantly. These realities need to be taken into account. When I say realities, I mean not only the line of engagement and military positions, but also the amendments to our constitution that concern our four new regions, which are our primordial lands. This should be clear to everyone, he added. It's perfectly clear that they don't understand it, nor are they prepared to search for any potential compromises. It's only the Zelensky formula for them with no alternatives, Lavrov concluded. Answering a question from journalists regarding Kharkov, Lavrov said that this city would play an important role in the creation of a demilitarized zone, which the Russian president had previously spoken about. To the next question about what needs to be done if the armed forces of Ukraine start shelling Kharkov, the head of the foreign ministry said that the special operation will need to be continued further. Thus, we can conclude that ours are not going to stop at the liberation of four Russian regions. Baltic countries fortifying borders with Russia there is a threat of attack. Estonia will significantly strengthen NATO's eastern border with Russia. Hundreds of reinforced bunkers will be built as part of a new defence line to protect the Baltic states and by extension the entire Western Defence Alliance from Russian attack, according to the Financial Times. To the south, Lithuania is opening more than a dozen so-called anti-mobility parks, such as anti-tank barriers, barbed wire and concrete blocks, which are designed to slow down potential invaders. Latvia, like the other two Baltic states, and Finland have also installed fences on their borders with Russia and Belarus. According to the agency, these works are a clear sign that security in NATO's frontline states is now determined by Russia's war in Ukraine. Last summer, Russian troops prevented a counter-offensive by Kyiv and regained the initiative on the battlefield. The leaders of the Baltic states, who saw a Russian defeat in Ukraine as the best way to guarantee their security, now see the tide of war turning in Moscow's direction. Recent months have brought a flurry of warnings about a possible Russian attack on NATO within the next decade. Not only 
how Vilnius, Riga and Tallinn sounded the alarm, but also ministers in Stockholm, Berlin and London have predicted a possible confrontation within two to eight years. Regional leaders see the three Baltic states with their small territories and narrow land links to the rest of NATO as a place where a bolder Putin might try to test the alliance's unity and resolve through destabilizing provocations or even a direct military attack. These fears are exacerbated by the prospect of Donald Trump returning to the White House after the November presidential election, which will raise serious doubts about the US commitment to European security at a time when few officials or analysts believe in Europe's ability to defend itself.